what's in your mouth? What have you got? Get down from there. Stop barking. Shh. It's pee pee time. Just stop biting me for five seconds, please. You'll be in a red bag. And you've got to be nice for, so the people can say what a good boy he is. Freddie, you're making this very hard. It looks like we need to go for a walk, maybe, Freddie. We may need to go for a long walk and come back when you're when you're nice and super tired. Look at Freddie Bear. Look who is it? Who is it? It is a pretty. It is a little Freddie Bear. It's Freddie Bear and Mummy. It's Mummy and the little Freddie Bear. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for another fun filled video. So today we have got the highly requested, <laughs> highly requested and long awaited We Got a Puppy All About Freddy video. So I've had lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of questions and requests for a video all about Freddy because lots of people are very curious and have very much fallen in love with him as we have. So today is actually the five month anniversary since we got this little scruff muffin. Little munchkin came into our lives. How are we feeling guys? Really good. Getting a bit wriggly, so. Shall we get going? Yeah. All I, I want to is to be close to you, but I don't know how and what to do. I'm so shy when it comes to you, but I guess you're curious, huh? So let me show you. Today is actually the five month anniversary since we got this little scruff muffin. Little munchkin came into our lives. And so I thought I would just make a quick video just to share a couple of pointers about having a puppy, getting a puppy, what are the absolute puppy essentials and just some kind of things that I have learned from, you know, having this little one. Now he is my third dog that I've ever had. I've had two Jack Russells previously, two girl Jack Russells. Two girl Jack Russell, so he's my first boy dog and I actually made an Instagram all about <laughs> get a boy dog they said, it'll be easy they said, which was really funny. Um, Freddie, are you going to be a rat bag this whole video? Are you going to be a rat bag this whole video or are you going to be a good boy? Remember the other video when you were just really tired and quiet and all you did was sit in mummy's lap and just have a little chill snuggle? Could we have that Freddy back, please? Could we have that Freddy back, please? What about a burger? All right, so we're gonna have to be pretty quick. So five months ago, we got Freddy. He was a planned purchase, obviously. Uh, we did not adopt or rescue Freddy. I had looked on a number of adoption and rescue sites, RSPCA, as well as local adoption sites throughout Queensland. 
but there were significant requirements that we had to be able to get a dog being allergies and because we live in a rental property there are requirements and limits on the size you can have for a dog so first and foremost was it was a requirement that we had a non-shedding dog due to my eldest son's allergies now obviously I had my dogs Wookie and my other dog Lilu before having children it was yeah it was it was difficult to have to keep them separated from Jake when he was a little baby and he had really bad eczema make sure you're aware of any existing allergies and take that into consideration so that was one requirement we had to get a dog that was non-shedding so a little bit about freddy he is a mini schnoodle so he is a mini schnauzer and a toy poodle cross so he doesn't shed he doesn't shed his coat and his hair is not hair it's wool so he is a non-shedding so he's good for anyone with allergies anyone with allergies oh freddy you're gonna be a little rat bag i know it yeah, get your lammy. All right, let's maybe talk about some of the things that you need to think about before getting a puppy or a pet in general. And I think the number one thing that you need to think about and consider and make sure is that you have the time available to be able to take care of a puppy and you're willing to make that commitment. Now, as an example, my two dogs, Lilu and Wookie, were 11 and 18 when they passed away. So that is a long-term commitment. You need to be able to make sure that you are able to make that commitment of time. Dogs, especially as pets, are pack animals, so they wanna be part of the family. They wanna be with people and have company. So again, another consideration is that you have the time available to be able to give them the attention that they need. So if you are working away from the home for long hours and you're gonna be leaving them alone, that's definitely one thing to consider especially if you've only got the one animal i think sometimes if you've got two animals to keep each other company that could be fine but when you only have the one i think it's um it's sometimes it's a little bit sad if you, you're going to be away from home and leave them at home for extended periods of time so definitely consider that yeah so the time it takes and also the effort that's involved now you've got a puppy or you've got a dog it's going to take work you're going to have to train them you're going to have to get up early enough to let them out to go to the bathroom and do their business you're going to have to put in the time and effort that's required to train and own a pet so definitely time and effort is a number one consideration make sure that you have the time available to devote to your pet and um, make sure you're willing to put that effort in which is a huge daily requirement next is obviously budget so besides the initial cost of purchasing a little poochy pet if you are purchasing even if you're adopting usually you'll have to pay some kind of fee that can be quite significant i know the price of animals and pets went up incredibly during covid when people were home and they decided to get pets uh, so definitely make sure that you can factor in the purchase price into your budget uh, the other thing is the ongoing costs and they can be quite significant and just to mention a few of the ongoing costs uh, you obviously have your initial cost of purchase or adoption. You've got registration, so we have to register pets with the local council here in Australia and also if it's not included in the purchase or adoption fee, you have to get them microchipped. Vaccinations, that can be quite costly. I think it was $116 each time Freddie got vaccinated and we had to do two vaccinations when he was a puppy. He already had his first vaccination before we got him and then it's annually after that. Uh, you've also got your fees for desexing. So little Frederico is booked in next Tuesday to get the little snip. I'm sorry to say, Freddy, you have to get the snip. Well, the big snip, because the vet said you have got unusually large testicles for the size of your puppy. The size of your puppiness, you have got unusually large testicles. <laughs> Too much information probably for some, but I was like, I took him in to get checked up because I saw some like kind of lumps on his his little boy puppy area um, and she was like no that's actually absolutely normal and fine but that's good that you brought him in here and I'm like I'm sorry I'm, I'm, I'm a first time boy dog mum so I'm just making sure because you know all this puppy testies are new to me so desexing him that's another expense that you have to consider uh, you need to consider the cost of puppy preschool and training, which is really critical. I think you need to make sure that you're socializing your puppy from the start, uh, from as young as possible and getting the training in. And for us, that was done through puppy preschool. 
Not that you'd know that that was a thing that we did with training, would you, Freddie? Uh, what other costs? Obviously, there's the cost of food, and to buy premium puppy food, which is always recommended by the vets, it's pretty expensive. So there's food, there's treats, there's also the worming, so the worming flea and tick treatment that has to be ongoing. That can get pricey. Heartworm injections, again, another expense. Uh, if you have a dog like Freddie that needs grooming, so previously we've had short coat dogs that didn't require professional grooming, they just required a wash and a brush. Uh, Frederico turns into a floof, a little floof monster if he isn't groomed. So there is that expense to consider and groomers are not cheap. I did not know how much it costs to groom dogs. For a basic kind of face trim and hygiene area shave and trim, it's $45. For a full groom, it's $120 for Freddy, this little teeny tiny thing. Uh, so that can be quite a significant expense and something you should factor in when you're deciding what type of dog to get. I'm so shy, yeah. When it comes to you, but I guess. And then there's also like the initial startup costs or the initial purchase costs for everything that you need. So that's everything like pet beds, you know, like a collar and a leash. He's got puppy pads that he needs, all your grooming essentials that are kind of a one off expense, but they are still something that needs to be factored in. Uh, and then there's ongoing expenses like if you're in an apartment or you've got limited access to outdoors. Or if you're going to be leaving the puppy at home inside, you need some pee pads or like a pee potty, puppy potty situation, which is another expense. The next thing that you need to do is make sure you have a routine and a roster. So if you've got a family and your family is going to be taking care of your lovely pet, I think it's a good idea to come up with a roster that everyone is aware of and everyone agrees to prior to getting the pet because they are a lot of work and you need to let them out to go to the bathroom you know first thing in the morning throughout the day last thing at night and you know not everyone is always going to be volunteering first thing in the morning especially in winter to take this one outside for a little pee pee break so that's something that i think that you need to talk about and discuss and maybe draw up a little roster to make sure that you know he's taken care of equally by everyone in the family uh definitely having a routine Freddie, like any youngster, thrives on having a routine, so we try and stick to the same thing every day, and that's really helped with his house training and just going to the bathroom the same time every day. We're trying to train him, what was it? I saw it on Instagram, actually, on Honey the Iggy's Instagram account, how the owner trained her to use a bell when she needed to go outside. So we're going to try that with Freddie and we'll see how we go. Besides the routine and roster, I think it's really important and this is something that our dog trainer at Puppy Preschool mentioned. She said to, and this is something I would suggest to do before you choose your dog, and that's to really research the breed and what they have been bred for historically because what they've been bred for is what the behaviors that they're going to exhibit so if you get like for example a retriever you're going to have to be doing a lot of fetch games so make sure you factor that in if you have got something that's been bred for you know guard dog purposes you best be believing that they are going to be uh, barking and so every time they hear a little noise outside that's their nature to be a guard dog so they're going to be barky so that's something that you need to be mindful of. Same with the activity level so if you're looking for a dog to be an exercise buddy you're not going to be wanting to choose a breed that's been bred to be a lap dog or any of the, the dogs that have been bred to have pushed in faces because they can't be exposed or get too hot because apparently their smushed in faces mean that they can overheat quite quickly and it can cause breathing difficulties. So definitely research the breed, research what they've been bred for because that is going to give you an indication of what the character traits are that you can expect from your little furry four-legged friend. The other thing that I think is really important to consider is also does that dog fit into your lifestyle so along with the breed traits it is the breed you know the coat so if you are someone who really loves to go to the beach and spends a lot of time at the beach consider if a long coat or a woolly coat is going to be ideal for you if you're expecting to take your little furry friend along with you to the beach for example my two dogs jack russell's short hair no problem at the beach they would go have a swim if they got sand in their coat it was no big deal to rinse it off and get it out Freddie, on the other hand, if you take him to the beach, obviously he's got longer hair, so that poses its own problem with long hair getting wet and it gets sand trapped in it. It's a much more involved exercise to get all that sand washed and brushed out. 
The other thing is with coats comes grooming. Again, going back to comparing my two different dog types that I've had. Short coat, Jack Russell's, super, super low maintenance and very, very easy to groom. Freddy being a long haired woolen coat, uh, a little bit more difficult to groom. And so it takes a lot of time and effort to spend grooming him. Another thing to consider is what your lifestyle is like. So when you have a dog, you can't really be taking any last minute trips away for the weekend or anything, you've got to always consider who's going to look after the pet, are they going to be able to come along with us? So all those little things are adding up. So anything that is like pet boarding or doggy daycare, that is all going to be adding to the cost. If you go away on holidays, are you going to be able to take them with you? If so, pet friendly accommodation is usually at a premium or an extra surcharge. So another expense to be incurred by having a pet and also something to consider. So if you are prone to be, you know, going away for weekends, make sure you either have friends and family who are willing and able to take your pet or that you are willing and able to take your pet with you. So guys, now I'm gonna go through some of the things that I think are essentials and some of the nice to haves. If you are considering getting a puppy for the first time, these are some of the things that I would suggest getting as the bare minimum. And I'll suggest some things that might be nice to haves. So definitely this is a must have a bed of some sort. And with a puppy, uh, definitely I would suggest having two beds, an extra bed maybe because they are prone to having accidents. So definitely a pet bed. A travel crate. Now this is probably not a necessity, but it sure came in very, very handy with trips to the vet and we've even used it trips to Bunnings. Um, and when we were training him to go in the car, he would travel in this. So I would definitely recommend that this is a great thing to have. This is from Kmart. It was not expensive, but it definitely did the job. Next up is this harness that clips into the seatbelt in your car. I would say that this is a must have if you are planning on taking your pet in the car. I think it's actually a legal requirement in Australia that you can't have animals that are not restrained in the car with you. So this simply clicks into the seatbelt and then this attaches to their lead or harness. So next thing, obviously you're going to have to have a collar or a harness. A harness is a much better option for walking the dog and for training your puppy because you don't want them to be pulling on a collar and doing any damage to their necks. stock standard one piece leads which are also good but we like this kind it kind of lets them have a little bit of free reign and obviously some little poo bags now one thing that I would highly recommend is when you take your little puppy for a walk have a little poopy bag little poop bag or poo bag uh, on 
the go and at the ready. When you've got a puppy, they're doing their business. When they're done, they might not be interested in just sitting still and holding tight while you're here fumbling about trying to get this out. The puppy's pulling, trying to get away. So I would highly recommend just having one already at the ready and either just have one ready in your pocket. And I would even go so far as to, you know, have it opened up and really, really ready to go so that you're ready to take care of business as it occurs. Because trust me, when you've got a puppy that is all ready to take off and you're still trying to fumble, trying to get this out and get it open and not have him wandering through and dragging himself through the business, um, take my advice and have it ready to go. Next thing you're definitely gonna need is some grooming essentials. So you can get these from Amazon, Kmart, Walmart, all those typical places. Look there first because the pet stores can be very expensive. And I'm gonna talk about sort of cheap things and more expensive things in a minute. I think that a metal comb, if you've got a long head pet, is a really good investment because it's gonna last you a lifetime rather than the plastic versions that are going to break. And depending on your dog's coat type will uh, determine which type of brush you need. So with Freddy's, he needs a slicker brush to take care of his woolly coat. I use the pin brush just to brush him through, first of all, to get rid of any kind of big tangles. And then this one to handle the matting. And then this one to make sure that the matting's all completely out. And he is uh, a high maintenance dog, so he does require brushing at least every few days, if not every day. If you are apartment bound or if you're leaving them inside, you're going to need some kind of pee pad. And there are some reusable ones that I'm looking at getting once these are all used up. You can actually also get a company that does like a subscription of turf boxes, not artificial grass, they're real grass. And they will just send them out to you like every week, every fortnight or however long you, de you decide. I attempted to make a version of that in the backyard, however, we have a puppy next door. He's kind of a bit older than Freddie. I think he's nine or 10 months. And he grabbed the piece of turf under the fence and he dragged it into their yard, which was actually a blessing in disguise because the turf that we used, one, Freddie didn't like going on it if it was wet. So if it was raining, he wouldn't go on the wet, wet grass. And also all the dry grass got loose and it kind of made a big mess. So I'm not sure I would advise doing that. However, I've seen that Kmart do have an artificial pet potty. Um, so I'm gonna grab that next time I'm at Kmart and I'm gonna put that in the outdoor area that I've set aside for Freddie's little outdoor puppy potty. Next thing you're obviously going to need are toys and things to keep your little one occupied and entertained. Now this is an area where I would say Buy some that you're happy to be destroyed, but invest in some that are good quality, like Kongs, that will last the test of time. So definitely invest in these. The same with pet beds. We bought this one from Pet Barn, and I think this one was around $80, which I think is pretty pricey for a pet bed. But we purchased one also from Kmart that was very similar to this, and I now use it just for the car um, bed, so I put it on the car seat for him to sit on. And that one, I think the first time it went through the washing machine, all the fur started to kind of peel away and come away. Whereas this one's been through the washing machine a number of times and it is still in absolutely perfect, pretty much as new condition. So I would say maybe go a little bit more on the quality side for the beds, for the grooming uh, and for leads if they have like a retractable mechanism. Like this one's a brand one, Flexi, made in Germany. and. The mechanism is just much smoother and it just feels much nicer. This one from Kmart, it's also good, but it's it sounds like it's smooth, but I find it sometimes gets a little bit on the pull out and on the retract. So, I mean, it depends what your budget is. I think this one was about $6. I think this one was around 30. So depending on your budget, Another few items that I forgot to mention when I was filming this was puppy proofing. So obviously you will need to put puppy gates if you've got stairs or areas that you wanna keep your puppy away from. If you remember this video that I filmed back at the start of the year when we first got Freddy, let me know in the comments if you remember watching this video when Freddy was just a baby puppy and we were having a little fun playing slip and slide. I am yours so tonight. 
another thing that I purchased, which was not a necessity, but it just gives me peace of mind if ever I have to leave Freddie home by himself because he is here on his own sometimes if I go to the store or go to the shops or anything like that. And that is a dog camera. So I have got a dog camera that you can switch on and you can use in your you can use remotely with your phone you can use it to watch to listen to freddie and you can also feed treats and the last thing that i forgot to mention was obviously a water bottle when you're taking your dog out for trips or walks it's essential that you have a water bottle i really love this particular model this is one that i bought off an instagram store and it has a little button that you can push to fill up the little bowl with water and then once you're done you can push it and it can put it back in so you're not having to tip out water if you've got any extra you don't always have the option to be able to tip water out so this is very very handy just make sure you obviously clean out the water after every time you use it because if you're feeding your dog and then tipping it back in you don't want to leave that in uh, for health and hygiene reasons. A puppy crate or pen is also an essential. I love this one from Bunnings as it is modular and you can make it into as many shapes and configurations as you like. Federico, come here, come here. Come here, Freddie, what have you got in your mouth? Can you give me that, please? Can you give me that? Right, okay, great, great. So here's the thing, be prepared. If you are getting a dog, this is one thing that you are gonna to have to be 100% sure that you're not gonna get sick of. What's in your mouth? What have you got? Get down from there. Stop barking. Shh, it's pee pee time. We have really done well with Freddie by having a routine for him. That involves getting up at the same time in the morning, when he gets up, making sure he is outside, having the opportunity to go to the toilet within the first kind of 10 minutes of getting up. Otherwise you're gonna pay for it. <laughs> you're gonna pay for it in puddles. So definitely having that first early morning, first thing, pee pee time, and then having breakfast or giving him a treat or a little snack, and then an early morning walk. So I find the best way to have him not be a crazy lunatic all through the day is to get in a nice early morning walk. And again, depending on the breed, depending on the age, depending on the size is how much exercise they're going to require. So do that as part of your research and make sure you have adequate time available in your day to be able to walk them and exercise them as they need. So Freddie is a poodle cross schnauzer, schnauzer poodle. So they're both active breeds. So he needs walking and he needs walking multiple times a day. So because he's so active, I take him for two pretty decent walks each day um, between 30 minutes to an hour each walk and then take him out for a few little puppy pee breaks throughout the day as well because he's home with me and I work from home I can do that with him and honestly if I weren't at home working from home all day uh, I wouldn't have got a pet because I don't think it's fair to the puppy to be just kind of left home alone I think then that they can become destructive Freddie, I'm trying to tell the people about how well behaved you are. Could you stop biting me for five seconds, please? I'm trying to tell the lovely people that love you so much what a good boy you are. And you are a good boy, but you're being a rat bag right now. You're being a rat bag. And you've got to be nice for, so the people can say what a good boy he is. What a good boy he is. What can you smell? You can smell, no, you're trying to get that piece of tissue that you had. Honestly, if I had a dollar for every time I said, Freddie, what's in your mouth? What's in your mouth? What's in your mouth, Freddie? I would be a millionaire. All right, the other thing that you need to do is get them really used to being handled and touched wherever they will get groomed or checked over by the vet. So you really wanna make sure you can say eyes, eyes, ears, and Freddie loves his ears being massaged because we did it since he was a puppy. So eyes, eyes, ears, teeth, let me see your teeth. <laughs> Pretty, I'm asking you to show me your teeth because I want to show you how good you are. Show me your teeth. Pause. 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 Show me your paws. Let's check your paws. Get them um, used to having their paws handled and pushing their nails kind of out so that when you do get them groomed. Oh, Frederico, you're being a rat bag nuisance. So that when you do get them groomed, they're not trying to, you know, bite the hand that's trying to clip them. They're used to, they're used to being handled. <laughs> Freddie, they're used to being handled. 
So guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you found it informative and fun, learning a little bit about Freddy and what it is like to have him. I would just say 100% do your research. <laughs> Freddy, you're making this very hard. I would just say 100% make sure you do your research. Do your research on the breed. Make sure that you've got the time and you're willing to put the effort in that is required to look after a dog. And that is just not having a dog that just sits in the corner or sleeps in the garage. And when you're getting a pet, and dogs especially, being pack animals, they wanna be social, they wanna be with you, they wanna be a part of the family. So, I mean, don't get a dog if they're just gonna be kept in the backyard, chained up, or it's not fair to them. And it's just gonna put it more stress on you when they're whining and crying and wanting to come inside. I think it's really important that you get a pet for the right reasons. Make sure you get a dog for the right reasons and make sure you put in a lot of thought. Look at this. This is what I mean. This is what I mean. Can't keep my eyes off you for two seconds. Honestly, Freddy, what's in your mouth? What's in your mouth, Frederico? That is yucky. Stop. Goodness gracious. Oh my goodness, anyone would think that was planned. You little wet bag. All right guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about Freddy and what it is like to have a pet if you are considering buying one or adopting one or adding one to your family. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big pause up and follow us over on Instagram because half of the content over there is all Freddy focused. Have a fabulous day, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone. You can do it. Little. Little. These ones are easy because there's lots of space. Little. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on, you're nearly there. Come on, I'm not going to carry you. Let's go. Let's go, pretty bit. Pretty, 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 Come on, come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Last one. Quick. Come on. Bye-bye. I'm just going to leave you. Bye bye. Bye bye, Bobby. You trick me. It's too I'm a big boy. I'm a big, big boy. I'm a big boy. Now. To you. But I don't know how. I'm a big boy. And what to do? I'm so shy. When it comes to you. But I guess you're curious, huh? So let me show you. Could it get more decor matching than this? Oh my goodness. Could we just appreciate the aesthetic of this thing? Wasting time with you, baby.